huge scuffle occurred between the three men, but when the would-be victim managed to turn the light on, he couldn't believe his eyes. He was uninjured, his two assailants, however, unable to see, had impaled each other. Today I'm here to announce that they've released a brand new episode of Embarrassingly Dumb Ways to Die. You guys sent this to me in the DMs of Discord. We is here to throw shade and be judgmental. Let's do this. Do you ever wonder if humanity will reach a point where we all become collectively enlightened? Like, we'll all just stop doing, what are you doing? obviously dumb stuff one day and live out each of our lives as happy and healthy individuals? Well, today is not that day. Nor is that day coming anytime soon, because we're on part 16 of this series. For anyone new here, we're looking at people who have removed themselves from the gene pool in ways that are so idiotic they prove that Darwin was right. So get your popcorn ready as we take a look at even more embarrassingly dumb ways people died. Get your hot Cheetos ready, boys. Big bad Big boom. bada boom. Big bada boom. Okay, before we dive into this first one, I just need to check real quick. Uh, nope, I'm not going insane. So here's a quick question. If you found some old unstable explosives on a piece of land near your home, what would you do? A, call the authorities and alert them to the situation. Light it on fire. B, pick them up, cart them around, and attempt to bury them. I'll give you a few I'm seconds not gonna to bury contemplate. Them. What would I bury them for? Are we done? Cool. I'm so the answer is obviously A, right? No one in their right mind would try to handle them, let alone bury them, unless they knew what they were doing, right? Right? Okay, good. I'm not Wrong. Doing Why did I ask? Oh, because back in 2004, a gentleman in Chiavenna, Italy, did just that. He discovered some old sticks of dynamite in an abandoned shack on some land near his vineyard. He'd had some experience of working with explosives before, so decided instead of calling the authorities, he could handle the situation himself. Unfortunately for him, this dynamite had been sitting around for a long time and was sweating nitroglycerin, Ooh. a highly unstable liquid component of this type of highly explosive. Unstable Unaware of component. how volatile these explosives now Very were, volatile. our man set about attempting to bury them. He dug a 30-foot hole, carefully placed the dynamite in it, and then gently filled it in. However, when he tried to flatten the earth mound he'd created by patting it down, the compression triggered the dynamite. The explosion was so huge that it rocked the town of Kiovena, and police rushed to investigate. They found our man torn to shreds, and he remained alive just long enough to tell them the story, before receiving his Darwin Award. Oh! Get rich quick. Ooh, Nigerian when your princess. doctor tells you to do something, whether it be to get more exercise, cut down on the coffee, or to stop throwing apples at them to try and keep them away, you should do it for the sake of your health. But if they start offering you financial advice, I'd seek a second opinion. Otherwise, you might end up like this next award winner. Back in 2014, our man arrived in Zambia from Malawi. Having very little money, he consulted a witch doctor asking him for advice on how to become rich. Now, most medically accredited doctors don't specialize in dispensing financial advice. But this one did. Was it to open a high interest savings account? Maybe study hard and get a good job? Nope. He suggested our man sacrifice parts of his own body. Oh! Hmm. That's not an option I've seen any big banks offering recently. Don't sacrifice why. parts of your own well, body. Well, putting his faith in the witch doctor, our award winner decided to travel out into the Zambian bush, oh. get butt naked, and then let nature take its course. Yep, so and by that, course. I mean wandering around for a few hours until a hungry hyena attacked him, yep. biting off three of his toes along with his manhood. Oh! Somehow our man survived, though his ability to procreate has been lost to the belly of the hyena earning him a Darwin Award nonetheless. Shame it doesn't have any monetary value, though. Oh. Got the hump. Hey, no, there's never a special have circle of hell camel. for people who hurt animals, in my opinion, but there's another circle for those who pick on the wrong animal and lose where they're mocked for all eternity. And that's the internet. Back in February 2023, the Brioshka Recreation Center in Omsk, Siberia, had a surprise guest for a children's event being held there a Bactrian camel. That's the kind with two humps. The camel, however, was not as excited to be there. Its handler tried to drag it towards the event through a patch of snow outside the center, 
but the camel was having none of it. Uh. Getting increasingly frustrated, the handler resorted to violence, repeatedly striking the animal in the head. Now, I don't know if oh. any of you have ever seen an adult Bactrian camel, but these things are huge. They're six foot tall at the shoulder and weigh in around a thousand pounds. Oh! And while they look pretty chill, they can become unstoppably aggressive. So picking a fight with one is not a smart move, as this guy quickly discovered. After landing the second blow, the camel suddenly responded by biting, mauling, trampling, and flinging the handler around like a ragdoll, as he was obviously no match for the massive beast. After the handler stopped moving, the camel went back to being a typical chill camel, as if nothing had happened. Needless to say, after being pummeled by a beast more than seven times his size, the handler didn't make it. Yeah. So yeah, I guess the lesson here is treat your animals as you want to be treated. Yep. Especially animals much bigger than you yep. that are prone to violence. Yep, very prone to violence, baby. How not to prank 101. Oh boy. YouTube's extreme prank community hasn't had the best rep in recent years. From creeps ignoring the all-important rule of consent to cases of child cruelty, it's pretty hard to upload an extreme prank that's entertaining, doesn't cross the line, and isn't faked for views. Yeah. But the idea of staging an extreme prank isn't something that one YouTuber from Tennessee even considered back in 2021, which led to his super dumb demise. Yep. He and his friend decided to prank a group of people late one night by running at them in a parking lot, wielding a butcher knife and pretending to rob them. Get shot, and someone bitch. else nearby recording the incident. That doesn't sound like a prank. That sounds like attempted assault. Now here's the thing. The group they were targeting didn't know that this was a prank. I'm guessing so their fear came across as authentic on camera. Very authentic. But Tennessee is quite famously Shot an open carry asses. state, meaning citizens are allowed to carry firearms. Blah, specifically blah. handguns cheer, on cheer, their persons cheer. for self-defense purposes, Everybody which down. one of them was. Yep. So when the YouTuber brandished a big old knife at the group and declared his intent to rob them, the armed group member immediately took him out. Yeah, it's not clear how he thought this was going to end. Stupid! Maybe he just really wanted to be a part of my Darwin Award series. Oh. At least now his prank has made it big on YouTube. It went viral after all. You stupid Hello, mother. Darkness, smiled friend. Oh. Darkness is crime's best friend, allowing people to commit unspeakable acts is without ever being seen, including by the idiots committing said crime, it turns out. Back in 2000, a couple of would-be criminals decided to target a gentleman who lived on a caravan park in Brisbane, Australia. It was late at night and very dark, so the pair thought they'd have the advantage. The guy would never see them coming. They each pulled out a knife and stormed the caravan, which was pitch black inside. A huge scuffle occurred between the three men, but when the would-be victim managed to turn the light on, he couldn't believe his eyes. <laughs> He was uninjured, his two assailants, however, unable to see, had impaled each other. One only just survived, but the other never made it to the hospital. I guess that's the last time either of them will be taking a stab in the dark. <laughs> you said taking a stab in the dark. <laughs> fast food fake. You know, considering how many of us indulge in fast food every day, the people flipping your burgers and making your pizzas really don't make enough money. But in a bid to make more cash, one pair of fast food managers ended up getting way more than they bargained for. This was back in the year 2000, when the night and day managers of a Burger King in Indianapolis came up with a plan to stage a robbery of the store they worked for. The day manager would steal $4,000 in cash from the day's takings before tying up the night manager in the walk-in freezer and setting a small fire in a wastebasket, making it look like the robbers had also tried to burn the place down. The fire alarm would go off and when the fire brigade arrived, the night manager would tell them it was a robbery and no one would think the pair of them had taken the money. This might have been a plan the freezer. that worked if the day manager hadn't messed up. She gonna freeze. They set the wastebasket on fire, but it was barely a smolder, which didn't set off any of the fire alarms. It wasn't until the morning crew came in and the rush of air from the open door sparked the smoldering embers to burst into flames that the firefighters were called. And only then did they find the manager in the freezer suffering from extreme hypothermia. As you can guess, she didn't make it to the hospital. But after realizing that the night manager's bindings were loose enough for her to have gotten free and that she could have escaped from the unlocked freezer, they began to suspect foul play. What? 
It wasn't long before they approached the day manager, who not only still had the cash on them, but had incriminatingly stashed it in a Burger King bag. Motherfuck! Man, if you're going to be dumb enough to try a plan like this, at least be smart enough not to get caught. <laughs> Cycle blame. Okay, cyclists of the world, listen up. Most drivers hate us. That's no secret. We're much slower than them, some of us take up way too much space on the road, and some even run red lights and ignore signs thinking they don't apply to us. If we want to improve our reputation, we need to do better. Starting with paying attention, otherwise you might end up like this next award winner. Back in 1997, a cyclist in Sorocaba, Brazil, put his Walkman headphones on and set off on his bicycle. Yeah. He was happily listening to his tunes, making his way through yeah, the city when he shit. decided to take a shortcut to his destination. Mm. Absorbed in his music, he pedaled on, blissfully unaware of his surroundings, when, all of a sudden, he was knocked off his bike by an oncoming plane. What? Yeah. The shortcut this guy had decided to take led across Sorocaba Airport's landing strip, and with his music blaring, he hadn't heard the twin prop plane approaching the runway to land. He crossed its path at exactly the wrong time, and needless to say, he didn't survive. Oh well, my there's God. at least one important lesson for all cyclists here. Not everything is a cycle lane. Oh. Up in flames. Here's a question. What do you use gasoline for? I bet most of you just said, it's fuel, duh. But did you know as a petroleum-based product, it's also pretty good at dissolving oils, making it a decent degreaser. The only obvious issue is that it's also highly flammable, which is why it's not advised to use it as your go-to degreaser. But that hasn't stopped some idiots. Back in 1998, a woman in Texas was cleaning the tennis shoes she was wearing with gasoline to give them that bright white finish. If she'd used an ounce of caution, this would have been absolutely fine. Except she was doing it right next to a candle she had recently lit, which she accidentally knocked over. All of a sudden, the flame ignited the spills of gasoline, leading to her shoes. Fire challenge! With her feet on fire, she panicked and yeah! ran to her neighbor's house who rushed for her water hose. But as she did, the polyester dress the woman was wearing, a notoriously flammable material, also caught fire from the flame of the shoes. The neighbor eventually put her out, but not before our idiot joined the many Darwin Award winners before her. Braving the Barricade Road signs and barricades are the bane of any car owner. One minute you're driving along, the next you need to turn around because the road ahead is closed. Grr, it's infuriating! Now I, being a law-abiding citizen, just take the L and try to find a detour, like 99% of normal people. However, there's that 1% of drivers that think, surely whatever they've closed oh. the road for doesn't apply to me, right? I'm special! Nothing bad will happen to me if I just keep on driving. Well, that's exactly what this next guy was thinking. Back in March 2018, New Jersey was in chaos. A recent storm had downed trees and power lines all over the place, so there was traffic snarling the roads and tailbacks everywhere you looked. Barricades were put up left, right, and center. However, one man who'd been asked by his father to come and shovel his driveway decided these barricades simply did not apply to him. He steered around a set of bright orange traffic cones that clearly blocked the road ahead of him and continued on his way. Yep, right that was until a downed electrical wire in the middle of the road, which was live and still buzzing with thousands of volts of electricity, struck the car, zapping the driver, and setting the entire thing on fire. Oh my god. Oh man, if only there'd been something to warn him of the danger ahead. Ah! I don't know, like a ah! set of bright orange cones purposely blocking the road? <sighs> Be smart. Boobies. You know what you should never fuck with? Bees. They sting, they swarm, and... The only type of good bees are boobies. Just had to say that. And they suck, period. So if you do have to fuck with them, you better know what you're doing. Or you could end up like this next award winner. Back in 2002, a farmer from Sao Paulo, Brazil was tasked with removing a beehive from one of his orange trees. He could have hired a professional to take care of it, but he figured the easiest and cheapest way to be rid of them would be to burn the hive himself. No. So he put on his gloves, long pants, and no. long sleeved garments before sealing everything together with tape so that bees wouldn't crawl into his clothes. No, you, you then he put a plastic head. bag on his head and sealed it tightly plastic around bag. his neck so the bees wouldn't sting his face. Mother. And finally, he grabbed a torch and went off to burn some bees. A few hours later, though, he hadn't returned. 
Worried, his wife went out to look for him and she found him. Dead. But it wasn't from the bees. In fact, their hive was untouched. It turned out that the bag strapped to his head was efficient at keeping out the bees, the smoke, oh, and the oxygen he needed to breathe. Yep, this idiot hadn't put any air holes in the bag and with his gloves taped down, his fumbling fingers weren't able to get any purchase to rip the bag off. Well, I think we all know the moral of this story. Yeah, don't fuck with bees. Buzzkill. If you legally own a gun, there's a good chance you've gone down to a firing range to practice your aim where you can shoot a bunch of sensible, non-life-threatening targets. You know, like paper targets, steel plates, balloons, live electrical utility poles. Wait, hang on. That last one isn't found on any shooting range I've ever been to. And with a very good reason, as one Pennsylvanian man discovered back in 2002. He and a few of his friends were practicing their marksmanship in a farm field by shooting at, you guessed it, a live electrical utility pole. Oh boy! Specifically, they were aiming at the glass electrical insulators lining the poles and keeping the wire suspended. Now, the good news is their aim was sharp enough to hit at least six of these insulators. The bad news was that as they hit the last insulator holding the live electrical wire in place, it fell down. Suddenly, our man became aware that the sun-scorched farmland they were on could catch fire, and so panicked, he grabbed the wire with his hands. Oh! Big mistake. Thousands of volts of electricity surged through his body, instantly ending him and fast-tracking his application into the coveted Darwin Award Hall of Fame. Oh. Chivalry is dead. Yep, and women Have you ever it. done something stupid to try and impress someone you like? Dumb. Maybe you bought them a super expensive gift or no. tried writing them a poem. No. Or worse, singing them a song. Nope. Yeah, I can hear the collective sigh of regret emanating from uh -oh. around the world. These approaches may sound cringy, but they're nothing compared to what these next two award winners did. Back in 2004, two Taiwanese college students met up one evening and after they'd had a little to drink, they both revealed they liked the same girl on campus. It was at this point things got heated and so they decided to have a contest to see who between them would get the rights to pursue the girl. Neither one of and them! how did they settle this? A nice safe game of rock, paper, scissors maybe? <laughs> nope. Seeing as this was a matter of honor and dignity, they decided to joust. But instead of horses, they'd use their scooters. The rules were that they'd ride at each other full speed and the first one to turn away would lose the contest. So, without helmets or any kind of safety equipment, the two rode straight at each other, topping out at 50 miles per hour, and crashed. Neither had the smarts to turn away, which cost both of them their lives. Ironically, they could have saved both their lives if they'd just talked to the girl. As it turned out, she hadn't been interested in either of them. Yeah, cause And that just makes this pair of Darwin Awards all the shinier. Yeah, because they liked her. <laughs> Kitchen Nightmares is there anything worse than losing the keys to your home? Ugh, it's so annoying. If you're lucky, you might remember that you forgot to lock a window and be able to clamber in that way. But it's usually better to just wait for a locksmith to let you in. Otherwise, your impatience could have some real consequences. Like what happened to this next Darwin Award winner. Back in 2004 in Wolfsburg, Austria, an incredibly inebriated gentleman returned home late one evening, only to discover he couldn't find his keys. No matter, he thought, because he could slip in through the kitchen window. The window itself was fixed at the base and tilted out, giving him just enough room to squeeze his head and part of his torso through. And that's when he got stuck. With both his legs off the ground and being a little drunk, he couldn't coordinate himself enough to push through. And then there was another complication. As he'd been struggling to get in, he'd accidentally turned on the tap below him, filling the kitchen sink with water. The more he struggled, the more he exhausted himself until he apparently fell asleep, still stuck in the window. From here, his head slipped into the water, and being as drunk as he was, he didn't wake up, and he drowned. He was discovered the next day, and to really make this a top-tier Darwin Award winner, as they were removing the body, the police found his keys in his pocket. Wow! Man, if he'd survived this ordeal, I'm pretty sure he would have died of embarrassment. That's bad. A bridge too far. It takes some serious kahunas to ride a motorbike. The speeds, the other road users, the lack of airbags, it's a risky way to travel. But even more so when you're a grade A idiot like this next guy was. 
Back in 2008, a Floridian gentleman dressed in swim trunks and sneakers was riding along when he noticed the Minnesota Key drawbridge ahead of him was beginning to open. And a sensible rider worth their salt would have slowed down and simply waited for the drawbridge to level again before crossing it. But not this guy. No, instead, clearly thinking he was in a Fast and Furious movie, decided to try his luck and jump the gap. So he increased his speed and shot forward. Unfortunately for him, drawbridge designers anticipate idiots just like this and so build in safety measures to most drawbridges in the form of crossing guards. The guards dropped down before a man had a chance to hit the brakes, clotheslining him off his bike at breakneck speeds and careening him over the side of the bridge. He hit the water, but the impact instantly wiped him out of the gene pool. Ironically, the bike carried on and apparently made it over to the other side. How oddly satisfying. Firework fail. Not your anus. There are a lot of things you shouldn't do with a firework. You shouldn't hold it while lighting the fuse. You shouldn't plant it somewhere dangerous. You shouldn't aim it at people. A lot of pretty obvious don'ts there. But you know which one I didn't think needed saying? Don't put it in your butt. And yet here we are in Sunderland, UK, a place I can only assume is the Florida of England back in 2006. It's November 8th, a few days after England's famous Guy Fox night, where bonfires and fireworks are lit to celebrate the day Mr. Fox didn't blow up the Houses of Parliament. With a leftover firework, our award winner decided he would let this one off in style. By lighting the fuse, lying down on the ground, and planting the firework, er, uh, twixt his cheeks. There's no way. There's every chance he could have just come away from this with a few burns to his backside if he'd planted it so that it shot directly up into the sky. However, the idiot had put the firework in his rear the wrong way round. What type of nasty so instead shit? of shooting up into the sky, it exploded on his scrotum. You dirty the incident uh, compromised his junk and his ability to procreate, thus removing any more of his idiot antics from the gene pool. Well, if I didn't know any better, I'd say Sunderland was challenging Florida for the title of most chaotic place in the world. Some like it hot. There's something about the superhuman abilities on display during competitive endurance sports that you can look away from. You want to watch a man run 200 miles in 48 hours? Of course you do. You want to see someone cycle 400 miles in less than a day? Absolutely! You want to watch someone step into a superheated hot box and stay in there for as long as possible? Hang on, what? That last one is real? And it's called the World Sauna Championship? Yeah. Founded in 1999, the World Sauna Championship was an endurance competition held in Finland. Each year, many eager sauna-loving competitors would enter the hot box, which was an infernal 230 degrees Fahrenheit, Damn. hotter than the boiling point of water and hot enough to cause third-degree burns. Water was poured on the coals inside the sauna every 30 seconds and competitors would attempt to outlast every other person in there with their efforts only counting if they could walk out of the box unaided. Not only was this an actual official event, competitors had to sign a legal agreement promising not to sue the event organizers if they got injured. Although that wouldn't make a difference to one of the men who competed back in 2010. After spending six minutes in the hellish hot box and outlasting every other competitor in there, the final two remaining competitors passed out and had to be dragged from the box. Both were covered in third-degree burns and blisters and were suffering from convulsions. One was transferred to the hospital where they revealed 70% of his skin was burned, his respiratory system was scorched, and his kidneys failed. He was put into a medically induced coma for six weeks before miraculously pulling through. The other guy wasn't so lucky. He passed mere minutes after being dragged from the box. And to really add the shine to this award, both competitors were disqualified. Well, hey, if you enter life-threateningly stupid competitions, I guess you win life-threateningly stupid prizes. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. It's your boy Blast from Sage D Twisms.